Sometimes it's not enough to be reminded that Jesus hasn't left you or forgotten you. We need to declare it over ourselves, over others. No matter the season you may find yourself in, no matter the depths of darkness you're wading through, you can join him in declaring the truth that God is light upon your feet, whether or not you can see the next step, that God is your strength even though the weight of life seems to be crushing you down, and that when your job, your marriage, your relationship, your health feels like it's coming to a dead end, there is only one God that can make dead things live again. These are his promises, and they're the only thing you need to declare over your life. So as you step into this next season or this next moment, you can declare that God's not done with you. He's just getting started. You can declare that the good work that he has started in you, he will surely complete it. You can declare that the same God that parted the seas goes before you, goes behind you. You can declare these promises over your life, over your family's life, over the people passing on the street. You can declare these truths over every circumstance, over every season of your life. You can declare that every day belongs to Him and every new breath belongs to Him. Because we have the power of a living God living inside of us. And this is our declaration. Grace and peace, beloved. God bless you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad in it. Amen. I'm so glad you tuned in today. I'm tuned. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're watching whenever you're watching. Amen. And if you're watching live, I thank God for you. Amen. So grace and peace be multiplied in your life. Amen. Welcome to the New Beginnings uh, Community Church Worldwide Broadcast. Amen. And I thank God for all of our partners and all of our friends and our members, amen, that helped to make this broadcast possible. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your service unto the Lord. We are making a difference. We're making a mark, hallelujah, that cannot be erased, amen. We're changing the world, hallelujah, transforming the world, hallelujah, with the love of God and the grace of God. So thank you so much. Hallelujah for all you've done and all that you are doing in Jesus' name. Now, let's get ready. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. After this prayer, amen, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. Glory be to God. And then we're going to get right into the word of God today. But before we do that, let's make our divine declaration today, our confession of faith based upon Hallelujah. And inspired by the motivation of that video. Amen. We can speak God's word over our lives. Amen. The Bible teaches us from the book of Hebrews that our world, that the world we see was framed by the word of God, by the word of the mouth of God, that God said, let there be. And there there was. Let there be light. And there was light. Amen. Hallelujah. So God framed the world by his word. And so because we have the same God kind of faith, we too can frame the world, our worlds by our words. Amen. By his word that is spoken out of his mouth that we believe and apply. And so let's speak God's word today in Jesus name. And then as we speak God's word, I speak God's word. I want you to know today in Jesus name, hallelujah, that God is going to watch over his word to perform it to bring it to pass and manifestation in your life. So declare with me right now, in Christ, I am unbought, unbossed, and unfinished by the chief of this godless world. Hallelujah. In Christ, I am unbought. I am unbossed and unfinished by the chief of this godless world. Satan ain't got nothing in or on me. In Jesus' name, it is so. And so it is. Amen. Now, God's going to watch over that word to perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God 
in Jesus name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for everyone watching. I thank you for every believer that's watching. I thank you today for the unbeliever that's watching, Lord God. It's my prayer that the believer will be strengthened in their faith, be encouraged, Lord God, built up. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, be edified, Lord God, that they'll know, hallelujah, that you are real, that you are cheering them on, you're rooting for them, hallelujah, and that they can live and do, hallelujah, great exploits through your power in Jesus name. And then for the unbeliever, I pray that they would accept your unconditional love, hallelujah, glory to God, and accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior that through the grace that you will save them like you saved us. Amen. Hallelujah. And that today thousands will be added unto your church. Millions will be added unto your church today. This is our prayer. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We ask in faith and believe in our hearts. Hallelujah. That it is so. And so it is in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, thank you, Lord. Let's continue to pray. Father, thank you for the elements that represent your broken body, the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for these elements. We call them blessed. We bless them in your name. Hallelujah. And they are consecrated unto you and they will serve the purpose for which they are now presented before us. Father, we thank you that anew we can experience, hallelujah, anew the revelation Hallelujah, as we properly discern the Lord's Supper today. It's in Jesus' name. We thank you and we give you praise. It is so, and so it is. Amen. On the evening before our Lord and Savior gave his life, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and told them to eat and eat all of it. But this was his broken body, which was broken for them. Today, saints of God, as we do so across this world, hallelujah, today we break the cracker, we break the wafer, we break the bread, and we partake of it, knowing that Christ's body was broken for us. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And at the end of the supper... He took the cup that was full of wine and he gave it to the disciples and told them to drink and to drink all of it. For this was representation of his shed blood, which was shed for the remission of their sins. Amen. Glory be to God. And so for us as well. So today we thank God for it. Let us now drink together. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. And may we experience every revelation of partaking of the Lord's Supper today. And let us decree, hallelujah, in agreement and say, all is well in Christ, all is well. Amen. Now let's get into the word of God today, amen. Hallelujah. And see what the Lord is going to say to us, hallelujah, through his word. Let's see what God's going to say to us through his word as we uh, now just hear the word of God and the message of God. Let's see what God is going to say to us today. His word is blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And our, in our declaration, hallelujah, I share with you what's what we're going to talk about today. Being unbought, unbossed, and unfinished. Beloved, God wants you to live an empowered life. The Bible teaches us that in the book of Corinthians that the kingdom of God is not mere talk, but it is an empowered life. And for this month, I want to spend time with you, amen, and I want to share this message with you about living an empowered life and living an empowered life in such a way that you live unbought, unbossed, and unfinished, that you understand, glory to God, that in Christ you can be all three, hallelujah, unbought, unbossed, and unfinished, meaning that the unfinished part, meaning that you have a work to do and an assignment to do, and Satan cannot undo you, hallelujah, you will not be undone by Satan. So to the point that you will finish the assignment that God has on your life, you will return to heaven empty because you have fulfilled the assignment that God has given you. Amen. Now, I want you to join me as we turn to the, the gospel of John, chapter 14. And where do we get this uh, message from or the title from? We get it from John's gospel, the 14th chapter, verses 29 and 30 in the message version of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. And here begins the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord says, 
I've told you this ahead of time. Now, this is Jesus Christ speaking. Amen. Excuse me one moment. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He says, I told you this ahead of time before it happens so that when it does happen, the confirmation will deepen your belief in me. I'll not be talking with you much more like this because the chief of this godless world is about to attack. But don't worry. He has nothing on me, no claim in me. But so the world might know how thoroughly I love the father. I am carrying out my father's assignment and instructions right down to the last detail. Get up. Let's go. It's time to leave here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Unbought and unbossed. You may be familiar with that phrase. Amen. Was the mantra of the late African-American Congresswoman Shirley, Shirley Chisholm. It was her signature campaign slogan, which was much a statement about her as it was a catchy and compelling message that helped her become the first black woman elected to Congress. Today, I want to borrow it and add the word unfinished to it, thus providing us with the title for the message today, Unbought, Unbossed, and Unfinished. Amen? Unbought and unfinished, unbought, unbossed, and unfinished, saints of God, is more than just a title. It's more than a catchy phrase. It is what I believe the sentiment that is taken from, hallelujah, and ex uh, extrapolated from the text of the Gospel of John. As we unpack this message, this text, I pray that you'll hear it, hallelujah, and see what I'm talking about. Amen. Now, the Lord in this Gospel of John, the Lord uh, is, uh, as we are now experiencing Lent in, in the church of Jesus Christ right now, that the Lord is speaking to his disciples about his forthcoming death and the things that are going to happen uh, on the next day and on the morrow because it's the evening before he was to be crucified. So his heart is heavy, y'all. He, 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 is, he is heavy in his heart, and he's expressing to them the sentiments uh, of what he's going through. He, he's expressing how he's feeling right now, and he shares this with them because God knows, Jesus knew, hallelujah, that he was going to have to strengthen them. And he was heavy in heart, but he knew that he had to strengthen them because he knew that they too would have to have something to hold on to because of what's getting ready to happen. So he wanted to give them a heads up. He wanted to let them know, saints of God, he wanted to let them know that they can hang in there, that they can endure, that they can make it through it in Jesus' name because he's going to make it through it. It's like what he said in, in the Gospel of John. He said, you know, I, 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 in, in this life, you're going to have some trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus again here is teaching his disciples as he's teaching us how to live unbought, unbossed, and unfinished. How to live in such a way that we can have victory over the enemy in Jesus' name. See, the Lord's heart and the passion of what he's getting ready to go through, hallelujah, is, is it expresses to me a specific resoluteness that he had that we can hear him declaring to his beloved disciples, I am unbought. I am unbossed and I am unfinished. I have a job to do, saints of God. In other words, Jesus was saying in the words of our text, he was saying, Satan does not own me. He does not control me and I will not be undone by him. Amen. Glory to God. He was saying, Satan does not own me. He doesn't control me and he will not undo me. Jesus knew y'all, right? He knew he, he knew who his father was, right? He knew he had authority over the devil, right? And Jesus knew he had a divine assignment that he was determined to complete. He was unbought. He was unbossed and he was unfinished. Saints of God. And which leads and opens up the first observation I want to make today is the informative nature of the discourse that he has with his disciples. See, Jesus took every moment serious. Hallelujah. Every moment in Jesus' life had purpose. Amen. And not all the moments are recorded for us in the Bible, but those that are, they have purpose in them. And so Jesus takes every moment that is presented to us as a teaching moment. So here was a teaching moment for his disciples. He would teach them, hallelujah, what they needed so that they could be ready and prepared to live a victorious life in the future. 
Here Jesus tells them about the events before they were accomplished so that it would strengthen their faith. He was forewarning them and preparing them ahead of time so when it happened, it would confirm their belief in him. Hallelujah. It would strengthen their faith. The chapter opens up. In the 14th chapter, it opens up with the words in John 14. 1. Listen to this. Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith. Hold on to it. Rely on it. Keep going and believe also in me. Glory be to God. Jesus said, you believe in God. Now believe in me, amen? Jesus said, but don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let what's about to happen, don't let what I'm telling you trouble you. Believe in God. As you believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus was saying, whatever you're going to go through, whatever you're going to experience, hallelujah, I need you to understand and underscore that you have to, you believe in God, but you also need to believe in me. He said, you need to have confidence, hallelujah, in your faith, glory to God confidence in what you believe in Jesus name. He says, you need to trust me. You need to have the faith and rely on it and believe on it and believe on it and keep going. Glory to God, despite hallelujah, what you're going through in Jesus name. Glory to God. So Jesus, uh, you know, in anticipation of what the disciples may be thinking in their minds and their hearts of what his words would produce, he now shares this with them ahead of time. I love that about God. He is omniscient. Jesus is omniscient. He knows everything. So he, 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 he says to them in way of preparing them, hallelujah, he says, listen, I'm getting ready to go through this. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go through this trial. I'm getting ready to go through this situation. Hallelujah. But I don't want you to be afraid. Hallelujah. I don't want you to fear. I don't want the fear. I don't want fear to trip you up. I've not given you the spirit of fear. I don't want fear to trip you up because Jesus knew that fear and faith cannot coexist. How many of you know that today? Fear and faith cannot coexist. One cancels out the other for they are mutually exclusive saints of God. So when it comes down to it, Jesus knew that when it goes down, when it goes down, you're going to need faith to overcome. When life has you between a rock and a hard place and Satan is trying to undo you, glory to God, and make you doubt Jesus, you will have the faith necessary to hold on to, to rely on and to keep going. Did you hear Jesus? Did you hear me, saints of God? Did you hear what God is saying? God says when you're in that place, when you're between the rock and the hard place and Satan is trying to undo you, hallelujah, trying to get you to compromise, trying to get you to sell out, trying to get you to give over and give in and give out. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I am telling you these things so that you can have faith, hallelujah, to endure, hallelujah, the attack of the enemy. Faith in Jesus, hallelujah. Faith in Jesus makes you unbought unbossed and unfinished in Jesus name, which leads me to the second observation. The chief of this godless world is coming into every life. Saints of God, when you read that word and it says, Jesus said, listen, Satan is about to, he's coming. Satan cometh. Satan cometh is the way the King James said. And that cometh, that cometh means I-N-G. He's coming. That, that, that fifth, is the suffix ending of ing, and it means that he's continuously coming into, into every life. Glory to God. And the revelation, God says that if he came after Jesus, he's going to come after you. So that brings me to the second point to say to you, the chief of this godless world is coming to every life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so saints of God, the ordeal that Jesus was facing right now, saints of God was not the first time that he faced Satan. No, you know that Satan came after Jesus many times. Amen. Oh, another time that was recorded in the Gospels, amen, the Synoptic Gospels. The Bible says in, in the Synoptic Gospel, Luke, one of the Synoptic Gospels, it says that after Jesus was tempted and tested, the Bible says he left him for a season. Hallelujah. I love the way this translation says it. It says that the completed that after the completion of the test, the devil retreated temporarily lying in wait for another opportunity. Did you hear that? Saints of God, when God, when the enemy comes after you, when the enemy comes in your life and you defeat him and you have victorious over, victory over him, he'll leave for a time, but he's going to come back because he's waiting for another opportunity. 
He did it. For, he did it to Jesus and he's going to do it to you. And this is that other opportunity that the enemy believes right now is the best opportunity, the uh, most favorable opportune, opportune time for him to come and pounce on Jesus and attack Jesus. Why not right here at the time in which he is facing the issues of his life, issues of his death, the issue of the assignment that God has given him? He says, I'm going to attack him now. I'm going to apply pressure to his flesh right now so he'll quit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this time right now was one of those times in Jesus's life. This time right now, he was facing the betrayal of Judas, one of the chosen ones that he had selected, the frustration of human hopes, the disappointment of apparent failure, the rejection of his people, and the agony of death. When you put them all together, saints of God, this would make an especially susceptible time in Jesus' life that he would be open to suggestion and temptation of the enemy. Moreover, on the final night of his execution, the Savior recognized that the events of this night and the, and the events of the following day, they were the unwelcome about to of Satan, the unwelcome coming into of the chief of this world. They represented that. They represented the attack of Satan. See, the coming of Satan. He had, hallelujah. And this is important that you see it this way, saints of God, because Jesus recognized this. He was then prepared to do battle. Saints of God, I need you to understand that the enemy was coming after Jesus to get him to question his resolve to serve the will of his father. And that's the way it is for all of us. The enemy is coming after you to question your resolve to serve the will of God. The enemy is coming after you to test you, to see if you're really going to keep God's word, if you're really going to serve the will of your father, if you're really going to go through with God what God has asked you. Are you really going to obey God? Are you really going to trust God? And I'm here to tell you, saints of God, Jesus gives us the example of how we can live our lives as unbought, unbossed and unfinished. Hallelujah. We can tell Satan, get back. You don't want this smoke. Hallelujah. You don't want this smoke. See, Satan, you don't want this smoke. You don't want none of this smoke. Satan was flexing his, was flexing again, but he didn't want the smoke of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we can speak that right now over our lives. When Satan starts flexing, you can say, you don't want no Jesus smoke. I belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. I am unbought. Glory to God. I am unbossed and I am, I am unfinished. You don't want no Jesus smoke, Satan. You don't want to mess with me. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. And I'm saying it this way, saints of God, so that you can begin to declare it out of your mouth. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. Satan does not want the Jesus smoke, but it's not going to stop him from trying. Hallelujah. If he went after Jesus, he's going to come after you. That's why I'm bringing up this point right here to say to you this observation that in the every life, hallelujah, the chief of this godless world is coming. If he went after Jesus, he's going to come after you. And anytime you feel an absence of Jesus in your life, an absence of his attack is not that he has quit. Glory to God. He's just waiting for another opportunity to attack you. Do not be deceived. Do not get caught napping. Saints of God, you must understand. You must stay prepared. This is spiritual warfare that we're talking about here. This was a spiritual warfare that Satan was applying pressure to the flesh of Jesus to get at his soul, his thinker, his thinker, his choose, his filler and chooser, because he wanted to get him to abate and abort the process that God had given him. He didn't want him to complete the process. He didn't want him to finish the work. He didn't want him to say, hallelujah, on Calvary's cross, it is finished. He wanted him to keep him from Calvary's cross. He didn't want him to go all the way through with it because he knew if he went through with it, it was over for him. Well, saints of God, the same is for you today. Hear me today in Jesus name. Satan is coming into your life. If not today, tomorrow, he's waiting for the opportune time. Saints of God to attack you, to come in your life. Why are you saying this to me? I'm saying this to you because saints of God, your adversary, like a roaring lion is roaming around seeking whom he can devour. Hour. Satan is flexing again. Hallelujah. If not today, tomorrow, but he don't want no Jesus smoke. Come on, declare. Say so you don't want no Jesus smoke in Jesus name, which leads me to observation number three. Saints of God, the chief of this godless world had nothing on Jesus or in Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. When he came, hallelujah, Jesus said this. He said he's coming, 
But don't worry, y'all. Don't worry. He says, he has nothing on me, no claim in me. Jesus said, hallelujah. He said, hallelujah. He's coming, but he does not have a hold upon my life. Glory to God. Jesus was unbought. Therefore, he could not be bossed. Hallelujah by the devil. Glory be to God. He was unbought, therefore he could not be bought. Satan was coming to boss him around. Satan was coming to tempt him and to put pressure on his flesh. But Jesus told his disciples, right? He said, don't worry. He has nothing on me and no claim in me. Hallelujah. Jesus lets us know what this is all about, y'all. Hallelujah. Listen, what I'm talking to and who I'm talking to right now, I'm talking to your inner man. I'm talking to the inner man, your soul, your thinker, your chooser, and your filler, because that's the battlefield. That's the battleground of the enemy. That's where the spiritual warfare is lodged and attacked. That's where it's going down at. But Jesus, hallelujah, lets us know how you can watch. Be victorious. See, saints of God, have you ever been tempted? Uh, have you ever not been tempted? Yeah, have you ever been tempted? But have you ever attempted to pick up a large object which had no convenient handles on it? You know, one of those moving boxes, but it didn't have the handles on it. It didn't have those handles where you can stick it in. You know, there were perforated handles that you could stick in, hallelujah, and, and lift it up. But this particular box didn't have those handles on it. If you ever attempted to move that, you discover that that's not easy to do. It's not that you can handle it. It's not that it wasn't too. It's not that it wasn't too heavy. It was just it wasn't convenient for you to handle it because watch this. It had no hand handles. It had no handles on it. It had no handholds on it. So therefore, you couldn't pick it up. Well, this is the same difficulty that Satan is having with Jesus. See, with the force that Jesus says to us, Hallelujah, that Satan is about to attack. But he says to them, to his disciples, don't worry. He has nothing on me, nothing in me, no, nothing on me and no claim in me. He is saying to us, saints of God, he doesn't have any handles. Glory to God. He has nothing to leverage over me. Glory be to God. See, Jesus had done the necessary self-examination. Hallelujah. And found that there was no convenient handles or grabbing places or grasping places for Satan to hold on to. Hallelujah. That there was nothing that the devil could leverage over Jesus. His loyalty was completely undivided. There was nothing in Jesus's heart that the devil could draw him away with and entice and bait him with. Oh, glory be to God. There was no lust or evil passion in Jesus' heart that Satan could find and use against him. Satan could not find any serviceable handles on Jesus. No hand handles, glory to God. Nothing that he can grab onto and hold on to Jesus and boss Jesus around and control Jesus with. Glory be to God. This is important for you to know this, saints of God, because this becomes the foundation of our faith. Because if Jesus had had the handles, had he had handles, then he couldn't be our savior. Had he had handles, then he couldn't be our Lord. Have he had handles, then he couldn't be our advocate. He couldn't be our paracletos. He couldn't be our perpetual intercessor. Glory be to God. But because he didn't have handles, because there was no leverage in him, because hallelujah, the truth is borne out in the life and testimony of Jesus, because the Bible says that he was tempted at all points like we are tempted, yet without sin. He can empathize with our weaknesses, saints of God, but he is victorious because he did not sin. There was no handles, glory be to God. There was no leverage in Jesus. That's why Jesus could tell his disciples, glory to God, let not your heart be troubled. Glory to God, you believe in God, believe also in me. That's why he can tell him, Satan is coming. The glory be to God, don't worry because he has no claim on me. He has no, hallelujah, nothing on me and no claim in me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, pause and celebrate that with me today. Let's celebrate our Lord and Savior, that he was victorious. God, glory to God, that he had not compromised, that he had not sold out to Satan. That Satan, though he came after him again and again, hallelujah, he never, ever was victorious because Jesus had nothing in him that Satan could grab a hold to. Glory be to God. Now, this brings me to another tension in the text, because when you think about Jesus not having anything that Satan can hold on to, you got to ask yourself, I know you're asking yourself, does the chief of this godless world have anything in me or anything on me? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I need you to ask yourself that question. Does the chief of this godless world have anything on or in you? Now, while Satan could not grab anything on Jesus and leverage anything against Jesus, saints of God, truth be told, oftentimes or sometimes he can find some things in us. 
Yeah, let's tell the truth. The Bible says this in James 1, 13 through 15. It says it this way in the message verse. It says, don't let anyone when they're under pressure to give in to evil say, God is trying to trip me up. Why? Because God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. The temptation to get in to evil comes from us and only us. We have no one to blame but the leering, seducing flare up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby called sin. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. See, saints of God, truth be told, sometimes we provide Satan with plenty of accessible handholds, handles, things that he can grab onto us things that are in our hearts that should not be there where he can conveniently come in and grab us and grab us. He tries grab us. He does. And so this is where the about to attack and the coming is known as spiritual warfare. This is where we get into more of the teaching. This is where you need to understand the saints of God, which brings me to the final observation for the day. Hallelujah. Jesus was ready and you may also be ready. Jesus was ready, and you may also be ready. Jesus said, don't worry. Hallelujah. He has nothing on me, nothing in me, and nothing uh, nothing on me, and no claim in me. He says, but so the world might know how thoroughly I love the Father. I am carrying out my Father's instructions right down to the last detail. Get up. Let's go. It's time to leave here. I said at the beginning that Jesus was unbought. He was unbossed, but also he was unfinished. Hallelujah. This lets me know, saints of God, that Jesus was prepared. This last statement of the chat of the passage of scripture, this verse 30, lets me know that Jesus was prepared for what Satan was trying to do in his life. Jesus was prepared for the battle. See, see, Jesus was unbought. He was unbossed, but also he was unfinished. Jesus knew. Hallelujah, what Satan was trying to do, and he was not going to let Satan undo him. He was not going to let Satan unravel him. He was not going to let Satan get him distracted to where he was not going to finish the assignment that God had given him. He said, so that the world will know, so that the devil and the whole world will know how much thoroughly I love God. I love my father. I am going to carry out my father's instructions right down to the last detail. I'm going to obey my father. Hallelujah. So he says to them, hallelujah, I am not, glory to God, glory to God, I am not bought by Satan, I am not bossed by Satan, but I am not finished either. I'm not going to let Satan undo me. I'm not going to let Satan deter me. I'm not, I'm not going to let Satan get me distracted. I'm not going to let Satan get me all off track. I'm going to finish the assignment that God gave me to do. He says, I'm going to obey my father's instructions right down to the last detail. It may hurt, but I'm going to finish. Glory to God. It may cost me some tears, but I'm going to finish. Glory be to God. I may be in agony, but I'm going to finish. Glory to God. I am going to finish because I am unbought. I am unbossed and I am unfinished. Satan will not undo me. Glory be to God. Jesus was determined to finish what he started. Jesus was determined to finish what God has started. And like Jesus, your inner man must endure and become formidable to the onslaught of the attacks of Satan so that you can say, I'm unbought, I'm unbossed, and I am unfinished. Glory to God. I will not be undone. See, Jesus was motivated by God's love. He said, I'm going to show the whole world how much I thoroughly love my father. I'm going to show the whole world how much God loves me. Glory be to God. And see, in the love of God, fear is cast out. Glory to God. In the perfect, complete, whole love of God, Fear is cast out in the perfect, complete, whole love of God. You get faith. You get confidence to endure. Hallelujah. Jesus shows us how not to be undone, not to be distracted, and not to be deterred. He was focused. Watch this. I saw in his words when he says, I'm going to finish it and I'm going to follow it down to the last detail. Jesus shows us how do you do this? Jesus says, hallelujah. He shows us that you have to be focused. Hallelujah. And pay attention to the details of the father's instructions. He embraced the will of God. He embraced the timing of God for his life. He was undaunted by the enemy's attack. And I'm telling you today in Jesus name that I believe today that Jesus brought the fight to the fight. He said, get up. Let's go. It's time to leave. Glory to God. He said, get up. 
Let's go. It's time to leave and finish what the father started and what the father planned and what the father has purposed. Glory to God. I can't sit here and let Satan just run all over me. I can't sit here and let Satan just have his way. I can't sit here and let Satan just beat up on me and I just give in and give out. No, he says, get up. Let's go. It's time to leave here. Jesus was ready, y'all. He was ready, right? He was ready because, saints of God, he knew who he was. He had done the self-examination. He knew that Satan had nothing in him and no claim on him. He knew this. So Jesus says, hallelujah, and his actions that we too, because we're in Christ and Christ is in us. And if he, if he has overcome the world, we can overcome the world. If, and the world means Satan. Glory to God. It means Satan and the things of this world. If Jesus overcame the world, you can overcome the world. Because he lives, you can live. Because he fought, you can fight. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. Satan is the defeated foe in Jesus' name. He don't want no Jesus smoke, but he's still going to come. But he don't want no Jesus smoke. See, saints of God, I want to tell you today in my conclusion, glory be to God, that you can be ready also. Yes, you can. How do I know this? Because watch this. The Bible says in the book of Peter, Peter said, be sober, be watchful, be prepared because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk of the lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But here it is, whom withstand steadfast in your faith, knowing that the same sufferings are accomplished in your brethren who are out, who are in the world. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. See, the Lord was prepared for Satan's arrival because he knew he was coming and did the proper self-examination to understand his state of preparedness for the fight. Each one of us, based upon what God is saying through, through Jesus and what God said through Peter, we can be sober. We can be vigilant. We can be prepared, y'all. Glory to God, because we know he's coming. If he came after Jesus, he's coming after you. If he's not attacking, he's coming. He's just waiting for opportune time. But when he comes, because you know he's coming, you can be prepared. Prepared how? Be watchful. Be vigilant. Be sober. And withstand him steadfast in your faith. You've got to make the necessary adjustments, hallelujah, that are inevitable for the arrival of Satan. You've got to make the adjustments in your life because the adversary is coming, saints of God, to test you, hallelujah, to put you through the ringer, to test you, but you will survive. And you will not only survive, you will thrive, hallelujah, because you will stand steadfast in your faith. Finally, you'll be able to combat and resist the devil through your faith, beloved. Why? Because when you know, believe, and trust God, you don't run away from the post of duty. You don't run away from the fight. You don't run away from the adversary. No, you stand and you face him. Glory to God, you face him head on. Glory to God. In fact, not only do you face him, you take the fight to the fight. Glory to God. You say, get up, let's go. I got work to do. Glory to God. I ain't got no time to be fooling around with you, Satan. Get up, let's go. Hallelujah. It's time to leave here. I'm telling you right now, in Jesus' name, you get up. Hallelujah, beloved. And you go and you finish what God has started in your life. Finish the plan. Finish the assignment that God has given you. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy undo you. Don't let the enemy deter you. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Get up. Hallelujah. And take the fight to the fight and finish what God has planned and what God has started and planned in your life. In Jesus name, you can say hallelujah like Jesus said. Don't worry. He has nothing on me and no claim in me. I am. Hallelujah. Unbought. You are unbought. You are unbossed. You are unfinished in Jesus name. Come on now. Now let's make this divine declaration in Christ. I am unbought, unbossed and unfinished by the chief of this godless world. Satan ain't got nothing in or on me in Jesus name. It is so. And so it is. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today. Hallelujah for your believers today that are watching. I thank you today for the word that you gave them today. I thank you today that their faith is built up in the name of Jesus, that they'll be able to withstand. Hallelujah. Being steadfast in their faith. 
hallelujah, against the onslaught of the enemy. I thank you today, hallelujah, that in Christ they are unbought. In Christ they are unbossed. Hallelujah. In Christ, they have been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. They don't belong to Satan. Satan can't control them. They belong to you. Hallelujah. And because of that, they are, un hallelujah, unfinished, that they have a work to do. They have an assignment on their lives. And I thank you today in Jesus' name that they will not be undone by Satan, but they will finish what God, what you have started in their life. In Jesus' name, God. And I pray today for the unbeliever today that they will accept your son Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will surrender their lives to him, knowing and believing, hallelujah, and trusting that you love them unconditionally and nothing could ever separate them from your love. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and decree and declare that it is so, and so it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise God, beloved. Hallelujah. If you have a response, hallelujah, after that prayer, amen, you want to get connected, amen, you're in the right place. Because here at NBCC Worldwide, we believe it's all about connection and change, amen. We want you to go to our website, amen, so that we can connect you to Christ, amen, salvation and eternal life, get connected to his church, discipleship and partnership and fellowship, and then get connected to his commission, where we go out into all the world and make disciples together, and we do this through prayer and giving and serving throughout the world so that we can corporately change the world. Hallelujah. For the glory of God and the advancement of God's kingdom on earth. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, amen. This is a new month. And with every new month, we like to know, we know that there are special days in the month. So I want to say to you all who have a special day in the month of March, happy special day. Amen. Happy and blessed special day to you and yours in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then saints of God, I just want to simply encourage you. Amen. Throughout the rest of this month, stay, stay connected. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Stay connected in Jesus name and continue to watch our e-church. Amen. Throughout the rest of the month. Amen. As our elders are coming to deliver the word of God in Jesus name that you may be edified and encouraged. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for you until next week. Hallelujah. Stay blessed. Stay connected and know that in Christ you are unbought, unbossed and unfinished. Hallelujah. Satan ain't got nothing in or on you in Jesus name. It is so. And so it is. Amen. God bless you.